Hello, this is Brian with Film Direct, and I'm going to do a video here on how to set up the Epson T3170X um, for film output on the Macintosh computer. So we're going to set it up with the PrintFab RIP software. So um, once you get the RIP software installed, go ahead and click on the PrintFab toolbox. We're going to go to the main menu and we're going to add printer. It's going to take a minute to de detect all the printers on the system. So let's choose the Epson SC3100X, hit add printer, okay. Go ahead and exit out of that. And then to actually change the settings for PrintFab, you need to open up your art program. So in this instance, we're gonna use Illustrator. And then go ahead and get your print dialog box open. Um, choose the printer that you just installed. And go to, it's either gonna say printer or setup and then make sure the printer is the, the, the right printer that you just, the, the one that you just installed. And then um, right-handed layout is where you're gonna make all the changes. So go ahead and click on layout. Um, you can ignore color matching, paper handling, ignore that paper feed. This is where it's gonna choose whether it's a manual feed, tray, or auto select. If you do auto select, whatever you set up on the actual printer is gonna select here, or you can just default and do the, um, the roll paper with no cut or roll cut, um, roll paper with a cut. So I'm going to leave that auto select for right now. And then under print fab settings, we need to change the media type to matte film at 2400 DPI. Brightness and contrast, leave it 100. The color correction, ink, all this other stuff, just go ahead and ignore all that. That's for um, that's for color printing. We don't we're not gonna mess with any of that stuff. So the next thing you want to change is go to printer features. Uh, under printer features, under print settings, change it to unidirectional. You can do bidirectional, it'll be a little bit faster, but the print won't be quite as clean. So we recommend unidirectional. Microwave quality, go ahead to or go ahead and set it to super. Platen gap default print separation line this is if you weren't going to have the printer cut each film this would print a line between each separation you can either turn that on or off uh, save paper roll like if you want to it'll it'll print it'll actually will cut a little bit closer to the the positive so you can turn that on to save a little bit of save a little bit of film and then once you're once you got those settings go ahead and go to special settings screen printing uh, these are going to be the settings are going to be changing the most um, in the PrintFab software. So, um, halftone screen mode, you need to turn this on or so it won't print halftones. There's four different options. You got single black, multi black, and then you got these pre halftone settings. The pre halftone means your R program is going to override um, the, the PrintFab settings. So, um, if, you, if you choose the multi black um, pre halftoned, then whatever you choose in Illustrator is going to override these settings right here. Uh, for sake of simplicity, I use the multi-black, and then I set the screen LPI angle and shape to whatever I normally use. Um, this one doesn't, PrintFab doesn't offer a 45, 22 and a half like Accurib does, so um, I, use, I use 46 with an angle of 25, which is pretty darn close to 45 and 22 and a half with a round dot. You know, if you do decide you want to use, if you absolutely need a 45, 22 and a half, you'll need to use the multi-black pre-half-toned and then set those settings up right here under output. You would need to change that to um, something like that. And then <clears throat> then when you go to print your half-tone dots, it'll, these settings will override the print fab settings. These settings right here. So, um, for simplicity's sake, I'm going to use multi black um, with a dot of 46 and um, an angle of 25 with a round dot. The screening saturation is similar to the, um, what is it, the droplet weight in AccuRip. So, um, it defaults to 200%. Uh, being familiar with this printer, it likes right around 160 or less, depending if you're running a, a single black or a multi black setting. Um, if you're running single black, I default it to 160. If you're going to use a multi black, like you're going to print from all four cartridges, I would I would do this even lower, maybe like 120 percent. 
and you, this is where you're going to be adjusting the most. You're going to, if you look at your film and it looks banded, or if it doesn't look dark enough, then you can increase in 10% increments. Uh, if it doesn't, if it looks too dark, <laughs> if it looks like the the film's <clears throat> excuse me, taking a long time to, to dry, then you can go ahead and uh, bump this down by 10% increments too. So that's that's how you would do that. Um, the multi-black cartridges, you can enable or disable each particular cartridge. So let's say, for instance, um, one of your nozzles is having trouble, like the black, maybe you can disable that cartridge. Or if you only want to run maybe from the cyan channel, you can disable the other cartridges and only run from that one particular channel. Like if you're running out of ink on these other three, you can you can have it print most of the separations from that one. So that's the way you can just enable or disable each cartridge. Uh, if you enable them all and you do in the multi-black setting, it's going to pull a little bit, little bit of ink from each cartridge. So once you get all the settings set up and then you're, you're happy with those settings, um, you want to save it as a preset. That way you can you can you don't have to do this every single time you print a job. So um, go to save current settings as preset, and then um, you can just do whatever. I usually put the information like what, how big the dot is, and um, if you're using a multi-black or whatever, and then hit OK, and then you want to duplicate the same setting. So save current, just go do the same thing again and do a dash one, I'll explain why here in a second. So now you're gonna have two of the exact same settings. And if you wanted to do more settings, you can. You can, let's say you want a, a setting at 50 degrees, you can save current setting, you know, change it to 50 degrees, or 50, not 50 degrees, but 50, the size, you know, 50 LPI. And then I would duplicate that as well. So now you have two, two 46 size um, settings and then a 50 setting. You can do this for whatever, 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 however many settings you want to do it with. And then the, the reason you do this is because every, every time you go to print a document, you want to choose one or the other settings. You don't want to let it just default to whatever. If you, if you go to print and it looks like it's going to print from this setting, it, it, it may not. It may actually just default to like a plain paper setting. You're going to get banding. It's not going to be very dark. It's going to print really fast on the printer. If that happens, then you know that it's not printing your actual settings. It's printing like a plain paper. It may not even be printing from print fab settings. It may be doing something entirely different. It's a Macintosh thing. So um, every for every document you, you print, you want to choose a particular setting. So... So like, like for instance, if, you, if this is the new document size, you just want to click printer and then choose the other one and then hit print. And then here you would, for every, for every one of these printer icons, it's going to print one sheet of film. So for this particular design, I, I would turn off the CMY and I would print the black, the yellow, and the orange. And that would send three um, films to the printer. As far as the size of the design goes, or the, the, um, the document size, the custom doesn't work very well. It's going to end up cutting off the film in weird spots. So I highly recommend setting up custom page sizes. And the way you do this is through your PrintFab toolbox. You need to choose the printer and then open the toolbox for that selected printer. Um, custom page sizes. Here's all the custom page sizes that, that it offers. And um, let's say you want to do a 24 by 50, you know, you can hit the plus sign and just label it whatever it is. And then go to here and you can just change this to 50, 50 inches or whatever, whatever, however long you want to do. Hit done. Go ahead and exit out of that. And then when you go back to your Illustrator document, you can choose whatever size film you need. Like for this particular design, it, it would fit on a 17 by 11 inch film. So that's the one I would choose. And then I would go ahead and hit output, turn those off and then hit print. Now it's gonna send these three separations to the printer. So that's pretty much it. That's that's um, all the settings you're really gonna need to you know, to get really nice films from the, the uh, Epson T series uh, 3170X. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact us or put a note in the box or down below and then uh, subscribe, like it if you like it. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care.